first part of today's tag team duo is Jason Waller, and he is a social media consultant with American Family Insurance. He helps leaders and employees see the value of social media to grow both their personal and the company's brand. He's a former BBC journalist, a PR professional, and now co-leads American Family's employee advocacy social media program. Uh, one thing you might not know about Jason is that he taught in China in his 20s. So it's an interesting fact about him. And the second part of our tag team duo is Tom Buheim, and he's an, the executive social media advisor and co-leader of the AmFam Employee Advocacy Program. He advises executives, uh, senior leadership on social media and communication best practices and oversees social media strategy for uh, American Family Insurance's CEO, Jack Selzweedle. And recently, Tom and Jack uh, won a PR Daily Award for executive visibility, so pretty, pretty prestigious award there. So today, uh, Jason and Tom are gonna give you a behind the scenes look at AmFam's employee, employee advocacy social media program, uh, and it will show you how you can not only grow your company's brand, but you can improve employee engagement and company culture as well. So without further ado, give a warm welcome to Tom I'm Jason. Thank you. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks everybody online for joining us. Um, real open here today. Just feel free to jump in if you've got questions and if we get them online, we'll try to answer them as quickly as we can. We'll also try to save some time at the end so we can answer your questions and Jason and I will stick after uh, if anyone wants to talk kind of one-on-one -on -one about some things too. So again, try to make it as open uh, as we can um, and we'll dive right in. So we're going to be talking a little bit about um, creating a social business, uh, what that means, uh, giving you some examples of what we're doing at American Family. We're a really big company, uh, but I think some of the things that we're doing uh, can translate to whatever size company you have. And so keep that in mind, especially as you're, you're thinking about questions um, and, and talk to us afterwards if you wanna um, kind of talk about, talk through strategies for, for whatever business you're in, uh, whatever size it is too. Um, we're here actually on October 3rd. Um, Jason, if you want to talk I about I wondered this how bit. long yeah. it was going to be before you Stepped realized it was you. my yes. slide, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and I just want to say that uh, I worked for the BBC. I am British, just if you're wondering where that accent is. It's not Australian, okay? It's certainly not Irish, okay? So uh, I'm British. I'm from England. I've been in the U.S. for eight years. and working for American Family for seven and a half. My wife is from Wisconsin. Um, so that's a little bit about my history. And uh, how about the AmFam's history? Um, that's not Tom and I, although Tom does rock a pretty good uh, bow tie. Uh, the, the guy on the right, on the right left here is Herman Whitwer. He's the, uh, the founder of uh, what was Farmers Mutual. And um, he noticed that farmers uh, drove less than city drivers and therefore presented less risk. Insurance people are always looking for less risk. And so uh, he set up Farmers Mutual uh, on October 3rd, as Tom said. It's our birthday today. And uh, October 3rd, 1927. Yeah, so today our 90th anniversary. Um, by the way, it's also Dream Bank's fifth anniversary. So I just want to give a big shout out to Chris and Amanda and, and their team here. Thank you for this tremendous resource uh, at Dream Bank, uh, and thanks American Family for, for providing this. Here's a little bit more. We, Jason, I want to share a little bit more about our company. Um, on our 90th anniversary, we have about 8,000 employees. Um, we've grown, obviously, over those, those uh, 90 years um, since Herman founded us just down the street here. Uh, we have uh, 2,700 agents across 19 states right now, mostly in the upper Midwest, but we are uh, spread across um, the country as well. The 13th largest property casualty insurance group, the 8th largest homeowners insurance company, the 9th I am reading this, I, uh, I'm sorry about this, the 9th largest auto insurer and uh, number 315 on the Fortune 500 list and looking to get bigger and bigger every year. Uh, in the 90 years that we've been around, we have grown, obviously. Uh, we were uh, Farmers Mutual, now we're American Family Insurance, and we're an enterprise, not just the, the single operating company. Uh, recently, we acquired the General um, and Homesight. Yeah, I'm not sure if you know of Homesight, but Homesight is uh, an online commercial, uh, online property insurance uh, company. And so, uh, and we're also 
uh, linked with American Family Connect and Assure Start, Assure Start too. So we, uh, like I said, we're growing. We have a, a great agency force. One of them is in the room today. And um, we also have a gr um, getting better uh, an online presence. Yeah, millions and millions of customers. We are nationwide now because of that enterprise uh, presence. Um, and, you know, we also have some, some star power behind our brand as well. You've probably seen some of our commercials with uh, Derek, Watt, uh, Derek Jeter, J.J. Watt, uh, Jennifer Hudson, um, Kevin Durant. You know, the premise of our marketing is pretty simple. We protect, uh, inspire, protect, and restore dreams. And uh, we're, we're sharing that message in a variety of ways, including through social media. Uh, but in case you had noticed, uh, insurance is a pretty noisy and complicated space. Um, uh, it's dominated right now by characters and critters, especially those uh, from companies that have a lot more money to spend in this space than American Family does. So as we learn, uh, money also plays a, a big part in social media and, and uh, how these companies are um, kind of outshouting uh, American Family and other insurance brands as well. And so that makes it hard for us. Uh, you know, we are big, but we're still a little kind of fish in, in this pond as well. Uh, it makes it hard for us to break through. But let's be honest, actually, it's, it's kind of noisy for everyone, especially in social media. Uh, this isn't probably news to most of you. Um, it's tough to reach people like we used to in social media. Um, and each of these platforms, the logos you see on the screen here, um, have done a lot in the last few years to kind of make an impact on that. They've, They've made it tougher for you to reach the people that you originally connect with or that you're trying to connect with. Um, so it's a little frustrating, especially if you run a smaller shop and you're, you're basically doing social media and a lot of other things to kind of break through. And, and um, it's frustrating for us as well at American Family. We, we spent a, a lot of time and a lot of effort building up our social media presence over the years. Uh, and to sort of have that rug pulled out from under you is, is, is challenging. And then it became obviously more expensive, as, as we'll talk about here in just a bit. It used to be that it was the free place to advertise. And if you build up, build up your following, then you would get uh, more, pe more presence. Uh, but now, Facebook leading the way with its dirty little algorithms. Uh, and uh, Instagram as well following, and, and Twitter as well. Um, the, it has, it's got worse. It's bad, and it's getting worse. In, in, uh, 2016, organic reach for Facebook pages fell, 50, uh, fell 52%. Uh, if you don't have a budget for amplifying that your uh, content, uh, then you're probably not going to be reaching people. And, uh, and even if you have a budget, Facebook is running out of places to advertise. Uh, they're creating secondary news feeds, putting ads in uh, Messenger and Instagram, adding more paid options for video. It's crowded and it's getting more and more expensive, just like a traditional uh, media space. So, so how do you break through? Obviously, this is frustrating for, for anybody who's trying to do social media, who's trying to, to get their message across through this uh, platform. Um, it's a dilemma, obviously, that American Family has addressed. Um, so no matter how big or small you are, you, you, this, is, this is something that you're facing right now. Um, something I faced as a social media manager for American Family uh, about three years ago. Um, so we confronted it with, with some ideas. Obviously, um, putting some money behind what we were doing was part of that strategy. But another part of that strategy uh, we'll talk about here a little bit, too, is uh, involving your, your employees. So, kind of a deep breath here. Obviously, we're talk we've talked about the frustrations that social media brings to, to, to managers and, and to marketing folks. Uh, but there are actually some things that you can do right now um, that don't cost anything, that can, that can still make an impact despite all the doom and gloom that Jason and I have talked about already. Uh, one of them is to create good content. I, I've seen this. Um, from what I've been doing for my brand through our uh, golf tournament, uh, the AmFam Championship, I manage the social media for that, for that uh, sub-brand. Um, if you create good content and folks are interested in what you're saying, you're going to break through that dreaded Facebook algorithm. You're going to reach the folks you want to reach. Um, part of that is also understanding the platforms that you're using, uh, especially Facebook. Um, but think about Twitter when you're uh, connecting one-on-one. -on -one. Think about Instagram for showcasing uh, the visual aspects of your business if that's uh, appropriate and, and applicable. 
And then actually think about investing in paid social media. There, there are um, inexpensive ways to, to do that. Um, obviously, Jason and I know a little bit about that, but there are other folks who are much smarter than this. Uh, our friend Andrew Foxwell is a wizard when it comes to paid social, and he's done some talks here at, at Dream Bank. Hit him up on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you about it. So those are you know, kind of some things that you can do to, to break through. But breaking through, uh, you can really do that through employee ad advocacy. It's asking or getting your employees uh, to share information that uh, you produce. Your marketing areas, or certainly our marketing area, is pr producing great content all the time. We've got various different websites that we, can, we want people to go to. And so our employees, uh, we want to empower them to send information out there to their followers and their, uh, their people. Let your employees be authentic spokespeople for your company. People don't necessarily trust brands these days and trust the message. Uh, it's, it's got, like uh, we've been saying, the platforms have become advertising sites. They're not necessarily uh, uh, places where people have conversations or their communities. They're just advertising platforms. And so um, empower your employees to talk about, just like employees would talk about or do talk about their company uh, over the garden fence or, or over, uh, over a beer or so. Uh, you're, if your employees are amplifying the, the message to their 400 people instead of four or five over a beer, uh, then you, it's going to be quite a powerful tool. And if you didn't know what employee advocacy is, uh, it's now is the time to know. We've got, um, in 2016, it says up there, the seven PR trends you need to know in 2016. One of them was employee adv advocacy. Uh, brands have started to take notice, and according to a report at Altimeter, um, interest in employee advocacy has more than doubled since uh, 2013, and jumping from 13% of social strategies uh, interested in uh, to 45%. And 90% of brands are actually pursuing an employee advocacy program right now. I know I went to a conference a co uh, couple of months ago and her I was speaking to people from Hershey's and the other various uh, insurance companies, which we won't be naming today. Um, they, they're all looking at uh, empowering their employees either through various platforms or sending emails to them to ask them to uh, send information out to their followers. Uh, it's as simple as sending an email and asking, uh, pretty much. I could listen to his, his uh, accent all day, so I might just <laughs> let him keep talking. Um, but seriously, here's a, a real basic explanation of, of employee advocacy, advocacy. Jason kind of touched on it a little bit. Uh, it's the promotion of company messages by employees to their personal and professional connections. Uh, employee word of mouth is powerful, and it has always contributed to a company's success. That's not new since social media. That's always happened over a beer, over the fence. But now it's happening online. Um, so I think this is how you can use uh, your employees to motivate them to, to share messages about this. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But in this equation, uh, employees really become advocates when they have something to say. Um, and this is something that we've encountered at American Family over the years. I really want to help the company grow. I want to help it spread its message. But I don't know what to say or how to say it. So if you can add uh, the right kind of content into that equation, you can really um, empower your employees um, to, to make that influence uh, to, their, to their networks. So 50% of employees are already posting about your company. You probably, if you're a social media manager, you probably see that through the hashtags that you're following. Um, we have a hashtag of uh, one AmFam and I work for AmFam, and we can see who's following those um, or who's tweeting from with those hashtags. And uh, personally, I put them in a uh, Twitter list and see who is. Um, posting uh, about our company, uh, not because I'm stalking anyone, just because I want to see what's going on. What is the, uh, what are people saying about AmFam and who is out there? So we can bring them in to our employee advocacy program. 
um, is a huge opportunity to make uh, it easier for our uh, employees. And we've given our employees a, a platform, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but the employee advocacy program, whether it is getting a list of uh, a large list of um, employees who are already out there, either on Facebook, Twitter, conversing with the, the, uh, the employees that you have anyway. Um, you can just bring a list together, uh, collate it, uh, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, dirty Excel. I, I don't like Excel. I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone here is a, a, a more of a creative person. Our company seems to be run on Excel, and it uh, scares me a little bit. Anyway, you put it into an Excel a spreadsheet with their emails, and then you've got, you've, uh, you've got that group. If, if it's two people or 200, you're still starting um, that program uh, as simple as it is. As simple as it might be even just through sending them uh, kind of asking emails. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I've got another slide. Um, not only are our employees or employee advocates already talking about uh, our social, uh, our company, um, but employees can give shout outs to us uh, on social. Collectively, our employees can reach more people than the company's accounts. I know our company account, I think, has about 250,000 uh, like followers. Uh, well, just think about all the employees you, that you might have, and certainly that we have. Uh, if they've got followers on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, it's going to grow and grow and grow uh, way past uh, the amount that uh, our uh, corporate uh, account has. And also, those employees, um, a lot of their followers don't necessarily know that you work for a, a company and, the, and don't necessarily know that our, our employees work for American Family, but every now and again, they might be tweeting about music, as I do, uh, or sports, but every now and again, if you've got that content to deliver, they, they deliver something that they see as a source of pride about their company, then they, um, they send it out and um, their followers get that kind of subtle advertising. So yeah, imagine that power of 10. Um, and again, depending on your company, it, it's definitely, it varies, but generally speaking, that's the, that's the math behind uh, your employees versus your brand. Um, before you get started though, um, it's important I think to lay some groundwork and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We've talked uh, some about content, that's important. Um, you're already producing that for your brand but start now thinking of your employees as an audience, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Jason mentioned the spreadsheet, the looking out and making Twitter lists for your, uh, your employees who are already talking about you, those 50% uh, of employees who are already talking about your brand out there in social media. Put them on a list, send them an email, connect with them, take them out to coffee and say, hey, I'd like you to, to start um, evangelizing about our brand in social media, and I'm gonna make it super easy for you. Um, speaking of super easy, that's a huge important uh, piece of this in any uh, employee advocacy program. Make it easy for them. We'll talk about some ways you can do that. Guidelines and disclosures. If you don't have a social media policy, you need one tomorrow. Um, uh, there are lots of options online. We'll talk a little bit more uh, in depth about uh, creating a social media policy and what should be in that, especially as it relates to uh, employee advocacy. And you need, to be, you need to be able to measure what you're doing um, and show some of the impact. Obviously, if you're spending time, resources, uh, money, whatever it might be in this kind of program, you need to show what, what you need to back that up with some, some measurements. There's some hard ones and some soft ones we can talk about uh, a little bit later on. So we're going to talk a little bit about content now. Yeah, so content is king, right? Uh, in employee advocacy, that's also important as well. You need to deliver content to your uh, advocates so they can amplify that content. You're going to be doing it anyway. Uh, you've got your mug, you've got your websites, your uh, different web pages. Uh, content's probably created for a lot of in a lot of companies maybe two, three things new every day. Well, we want to get those out there so uh, your people may not know uh, what to say, so give them that information. Make sure it's uh, a timely, you might have some campaigns, let them know about the campaigns. Um, so any of the content could be anything digital, uh, it could be blog posts, uh, YouTube videos, white papers. If you're producing it, let them have it. Absolutely. And so 
we've got to think about their content as well. So uh, what we do in our social platform is uh, allow our advocates to personalize their own streams that would uh, information that comes into uh, their platform. Uh, and so we have quite a few employees who are uh, thought leaders, experts in their own field. It might be a, in a PR person in communications. It might just be uh, talking about leadership if they're um, directors, VPs, uh, well, any management, but uh, manager, HR people might be talking about HR culture or the company's culture. And so we want them to uh, set, be developing their own brand and developing their own following from like-minded people. Uh, obviously, if they develop more pe if they get a larger following, that's more people that they'll be able to uh, send information about the company. Um, so we have, I'm going to talk about Pat there. Pat is a, uh, is it, she's a legend, to be honest. She's a, um, a children's book author as well as uh, our uh, intranet homepage uh, editor. And so um, she has, I think it's, I don't know what exactly, there's more than 2,000 followers on Twitter and a lot of followers on Facebook. And she is one of our leaders uh, in the employee advocacy program. She gets, um, we have a point system, we've gamified our employee, employee ambassador program. And she's always up there. She's leading currently uh, and she's got a lot of interaction among other um, children's authors, authors, but every now and again she uh, sends out some information about American Family and those people who she's connecting with are able to connect with our, uh, our company. And she's definitely got her own brand and we have lots of employees like that and, and you likely have too that they're smart about something outside of your business or they're smart about your business and they're already talking about this. It's definitely a mix of, of two. We we're not talking about just um, you know, being a shill for your company, we want it to be a mix. And when we, when we talk to our advocates, we really say it's, it should be about 90-10, and 90 is, is really more about your personal brand, and the 10% can be uh, about, about the company. Um, and here's why, again, why employees are important um, to have uh, behind the message that you're sending. The, they extend the number of people who um, consume your company messages, as, as Jason talked about. As, as they're starting to mix in those messages around everything else they're posting in social media, those are, are reaching two times uh, more folks uh, from a click-through standpoint. So you're, you're, you're able to use the, the power of employees um, to, to get folks to, to consume the content that you're producing already. Um, and I think that's, that's an important um, point to make as well. Um, let you talk a little bit more about rock stars. Well, uh a lot of our uh, employees are rock stars anyway, but um, we do, we look for our uh, social media rock stars. And certainly the people in our employee advocacy program, we look for engaged people uh, and those who are engaged in social media. We obviously don't want people who, want, who aren't all that happy with the work that they're doing and we don't want them tweeting out bad things about AmFam, obviously. Um, so we look for those who are engaged and those who are, um, who are doing re really well on social media. Uh, it's easy to find those people, like we said earlier, uh, look for the hashtags that they might be using. Um, we've got a couple of um, hashtags with one AmFam and I nearly did the Justin Timberlake uh, the hashtag thing then, but I, 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 unfortunately that's become a habit. Um, so uh, there's one AmFam and then there's I work for AmFam that we use. And you can see who's using those and then also who's connecting with uh, people who are um, using those hashtags and sending information about, uh, about your company to find those, uh, to find those employees. Jason's got a great story too, a personal story about how he kind of got pulled into this whole world several years ago and that he's gonna to share too. Yeah, yeah, uh, so uh, it's, these uh, marketing will probably have campaigns going on um, and our marketing area had round about, what was it, three or four years, might have been a lot might four be more years actually, <laughs> uh, round about this time, um, uh, it, was, it was a November uh, time and it was 30 days of thanks. And so there was a lot of content being sent out uh, from the marketing area, the social media platforms as well. Uh, but the um, marketing brought 
those of us who were seen as kind of uh, social media, I didn't know I was a social media rock star at that time, but apparently uh, that's what Tom thought I was. Yeah, because um, Tom and the group uh, sent an email to, I don't know how many, but probably between 50 and 100, um, with also a little package. Um, there was a pin, there was uh, just a kind of a welcome to the group uh, email and letter and just gave us a few points of, uh, they let us know what the 30 Days of Thanks, the campaign was all about, uh, what we, we were to expect, um, what, that there would be blogs coming out, that there would be uh, social media posts uh, sent on certain days, and pretty much asked us to amplify about it, but also when we tweet just general things, and if we wanted to be uh, thankful and appreciative, um, Put in the hashtag 30 days of thanks and it uh, to me it was uh, it was inclusive it was uh, we talk a lot about diversity and inclusion uh, in corporations at the moment well it brought quite a few of us who were known to be out there on social media into um, kind of a group together and I online met quite a lot of other employees and still continue to meet a lot of uh, other employees uh, through the employee ambassador program uh, truth be told, I think Chris alluded to this in our intro. We actually have we have rock stars, obviously, like Jason, but we also have a secret weapon. Um, he's the ultimate social media rock star. He's our CEO, Jack Salzwedel. Uh, kind of a big deal on Twitter, if you didn't know this already. Uh, he's been named the most active and the most engaged Fortune 500 CEO on Twitter. Um, no small feat. Uh, part of my job has been, uh, actually over the last six years, even before we started an employee advocacy program, has been advising Jack on a variety of things, including social media. Twitter is his favorite platform uh, at this point, but we've added a blog, and he's a little more active on LinkedIn, and he's got a podcast. Um, but Jack really sets the tone for our company culture and for our employee advocates. They're, the reason uh, a lot of people at our company are on Twitter is because of this guy, because he's so active and so engaged. Uh, in Twitter. It's, it's actually the best way to ever talk to our CEO. Don't send him an email. He might respond to it, but if you tweet him, absolutely he's going he's gonna to respond to you. Um, you know, if you can convince your leadership, especially your CEO, to get active and to kind of take that first bold step to be on social media, uh, I think your employees will, will definitely have someone that they can follow, just like we do at American Family. Um, again, J Jack's very active. One of the th things that uh, he posted recently was you know, getting out there um, for what we did to support the uh, Hurricane Harvey victims in, in Houston. So I provide him a lot of content options. He does a lot of stuff on his own. Um, he's part of our employee advocacy program, obviously, as the CEO. And just b back to Jack a little bit, uh, and the, uh, the advocacy program, that when people, when the uh, employees are connecting to each other on various social media platforms. It can be it can be helpful for engagement. Uh, I know I've been I was in a meeting last week when someone was uh, we were talking about someone had tweeted something and they and they thanked me for liking it right and I'm and I'm a nobody in the company right but uh, someone called me I'm I'm famous I'm fan famous right and they said <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But they said, oh, th thanks, for, for, thanks for liking that. And it was something that they were doing uh, community investment-wise. And uh, next to me, uh, I soon got out of the conversation, and someone next to me said, oh, well, Jack liked something I did the other day. And they, it went around the room of who Jack follows and who, uh, li uh, who Jack liked with their tweets and that. And you could see the, the twinkles in their eyes and the, the, the smiles on their faces that leaders and, and, and people are connecting uh, with, their, uh, with their information that they send out. Um, so recent data also suggests that uh, companies should consider employee advocacy as a, a key component of their HR strategy. Our talent acquisition team are our biggest uh, employee advocates. Uh, they network with job seekers, they showcase our brand and help establish our company as a, a workplace of choice here in Madison. Um, and this, this is the culture we're trying to achieve and social media definitely plays a role. Done right, your employees can create a consistent employer brand. They're definitely our rock stars for sure. 
And then not only our recruiters, we get those involved, but we get our salespeople involved as well. We do have a separate program for our salespeople, and we use a different platform, and we send them uh, content provided by uh, the, kind of our corporate group, and also um, that is it's kind of uh, marketing-based, uh, but also uh, ideas to send, as you see on the right-hand side. Um, summer has efficiently come to an end, and fall is here. Um, just kind of personalized, uh, th so they can personalize their own brand and localize their own content, too. It's me again, isn't it? Sorry. Right, okay. We just like your voice. <laughs> uh, so 92% of employees' Twitter followers are new to your company. I think we alluded to that earlier. Uh, employees are more trusted and an auth authentic source of information. Um, Nielsen says that 90% of consumers uh, trust recommendations from people they know rather than the corporate brand. Uh, only 33% trust uh, the brand messages. So it's not only that um, employees can send out the information uh, on their social media platform and, uh, and content, but also it's trusted and it's probably more powerful than uh, getting what seems like a, a commercial into their newsfeed. And it's, and it's brand new, as this slide alludes to. It's, um, that, that's one of the things that we've encountered at AmFam is, well, I already saw so-and-so tweet out this. Well. That's, that's great, but your, your uh, network is unique to your, your person, and each employee has a unique network, and so sending that message is gonna touch different people uh, depending on the individual's network. Um, you know, I think, I talked about making it super easy from a, a content standpoint, but I think everything involved with employee advocacy needs to be easy as well. Um, start, as, as Jason has talked about a little bit too, just, just asking them, Make it super easy. His, the email that he got uh, from, from a, a marketing campaign standpoint, uh, involve your employees in, in what they're doing, but make it super easy for them. Um, you know, bake it into, your, into those emails that you send out to, to uh, employees. If you have an intranet, if you're a big enough company for that, or, or some sort of board, online board that you're sharing things, uh, put that content out there and ask folks to share it. Um, one of the things that we do, it's, it's kind of a kooky little site that we use, but um, we have a, an intranet site that we post stories on, and often those stories have some sort of social media sharing component, which we encourage all of our employees to do, um, all 8,000 of them. We actually use a site called ShareLink Generator. It's super easy. Google it if you want to. Basically, you can, it's got all the different platform sites in it. You can put a link in there and then create a shareable link from, for each of those platforms, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest. We use actually Pinterest. Um, and then even for Twitter, you can, you can craft the tweet, you can put the hashtag in that you would want, uh, and the link as well, and then um, that's a one click to share, it's super easy. Um, we've, uh, we've used shortened URLs as well to track that, as we'll talk a little bit here about measurement coming up. Um, and I think Jason's gonna allude to this number as well, but um, the, it's, it's impactful what, what folks can share, I'll let you. Speak to this. I'm just saying, uh, with the when you're giving uh, information and guiding people uh, to do things that you want, just be, uh, just keep it simple. Uh, give step, step by step process um, and give good, solid, clear instructions. I know I, when I wasn't uh, part of the social media team, uh, but being told, being asked to do a few things for them. The, the more guidance I could get, the better it was, um, because we can't do. You, don't presume that they know what to do, even though they might be social media rock stars themselves. So, um, what happens to brand messages when they're shared by employees? Have you seen that figure? It's quite, uh, quite astounding. They reach 561% more people. Uh, what it costs you to get? What would it cost you to get uh, that kind of reach on Facebook today? Quite a lot. Um, so we need uh, another kind of important tip is that you have a social media policy. Generally in your company, your company should have a social media policy anyway if you're using uh, the, the various platforms. Uh, make that clear and concise. Uh, provide the guidance again for uh, what employees should and shouldn't do. Work with a uh, legal team and HR team to develop it um, and just uh, 
It's, it's gone out of my head now, but uh, Tom's got uh, just a, a one line, just... Uh, do no harm. Do no harm, yeah. That's the, exactly what you uh, sh uh, should be doing. Yeah, don't you're... mix your company in politics, don't mix your company in religion. You can personally t uh, send information, a uh, tweet out about um, your political views, but don't bring your company into it like that, or at least that's uh, how we do it with our social media policy. And we also, uh, include a disclosure. The FTC uh, wants you to, if you are tweeting about your company and certainly marketing your company, uh, you need a disclosure. Ours is, I work for AmFam. Over to Tom. Yeah, uh, so just quickly about disclosure. Um, this is a, a fairly recent change in the Federal Trade Commission's policies since they, it's mostly started from when brands started using paid uh, uh, endorsers to you know put things on social media where you've seen like hashtag ad or paid or sponsored or something like that but they also included they also threw employees into this mix as well and so um, one of the things they want you to do is disclose that relationship within the actual post that you're doing putting it in your profile that's fine if you want to do that but that doesn't get you uh, what you need from a disclosure standpoint so um, that's where I work for AmFam comes from um, that's where we start to see um, our content, where we're, we're, we're putting it out there from um, employee advocates. We're in, appending that content to uh, those slides as well. I'm just going to kind of skip through here quickly. Um, uh, one final must from a, a content standpoint, from an employee advocacy standpoint, um, measurement. You want to be able to measure what it is that you're, you're producing, what you're giving to uh, your employees. Again, I mentioned earlier, a lot of this is uh, going to be sort of soft uh, metrics, but some of it is things you can track. Like I mentioned, getting a, putting those links in when you're providing them to your employees, track those links through a, a URL shortener. Um, if you can purchase a tool, this is kind of where we're going to talk about, you see the Everyone Social logo. This is actually a platform that we've, uh, we've purchased through American Family Insurance to give to our uh, employee advocates. They can go onto that platform and have a stream just with company news. They can also have other streams that are related to the industry, to leadership, to culture, to um, you know, career development, things that are interesting to them outside of what it is that's affecting the brand. We're using that platform and we can measure that on the other side. Obviously that's a sort of a big brand move, but if you have the budget for that or you want to pursue that, definitely talk to Jason and I afterwards. We can go into more depth about what we're doing with Everyone Social and what some of the, the options are for that. But these are some of the things that you can, you can absolutely start to share. Obviously, how many folks you have in your program, uh, the, the stuff that you're giving them, uh, the shares that they're doing, put them on a list, keep track of what it is that they're sharing from, from the content you're giving them, the engagements they're getting around that, the clicks and the traffic, th that sort of thing. And so we measure connections, uh, shares, engagements, and uh, branded visits. Uh, our advocates, uh, they're connected to more than 300,000 uh, people. That's uh, on the different platforms, LinkedIn. Uh, we've got LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter mainly in our program. Um, and our advocates since 2016 shared 32,000 uh, articles. It might have been, uh, uh, it wasn't all our uh, branded, it was uh, some was uh, to do with their professional and personal interests too. Uh, so that generated 55,500 plus uh, social media engagements, and uh, we got 12,500 click-throughs into our own branded uh, websites. That's no. with only, on, well, I say only, but it's only. 165, 165 folks doing that. Again, that's about um, 18 months worth of data there, but um, it, it only takes a few folks. Actually, one of the stats we don't have in here is uh, uh, 35 folks can, um, together can reach about a million people. Um, if you can get them to share it to, to all of their networks. Um, uh, this is actually a number that we've calculated with our partners at Everyone Social. This is the earned media that we've generated uh, in the past 18 months through our program. Um, that's again just with about 165 employee advocates. Earned media is basically the uh, advertising equivalent of what it would cost for us to place that uh, content that got shared um, through paid media. Um, and so. Uh, we feel like this is a good number. It's a good building number. It's one of the measurements that you can track. Uh, but again, I measure. Uh, it's, it's one of the hard measurements, but I talked about some of the soft measurements. 
Some of those things we've alluded to earlier are um, thought leadership. You, you can't really measure thought leadership, but you want your employees to be smart about what, what they're doing in their work. And social media is one of those places that they can do that. Um, and it's one of the things that if you engage them in an employee advocacy program and give them the content to share around that, uh, whatever it is that they're smart about, uh, their, their influence, their personal brand is going to grow as a, as a result. They get smarter too. Exactly. Yeah, you know, the, the other part of this too is, uh, we've alluded to a little bit, is, is this idea of engagement. Obviously with the CEO who's active in social media, employees are more engaged. That may not be the case for you, but in general, um, those folks in employee advocacy programs are more engaged employees. Um, social media is a tool for employees to make connections across whatever role they're in and wherever they work. We are across 19 states, and so this is a way for our people to connect with each other. Um, and there's actually a little bit of science behind this. Uh, this is some altimeter group uh, data, actually, that these are uh, you know, some, some of the results of what it is to be in an employee advocacy program, feeling more connected and, and authentic about the, the company that you work for. These are people who are posting now about, about the, the companies they work for, and these are some of the results of that, too. They better understand uh, what their business is doing. I've become smarter about what American Family does because of the content that I've been exposed to in, uh, in our employee advocacy program. I think that's the case for a lot of our folks. And again, I mentioned you know, building that personal brand. Um, colleagues are seeing the, these employee advocates as influential, like, like our, our colleague, Pat Miller. She's not only influential um, in her space outside of work, but she's also influential inside the walls of AmFam. When we say uh, our uh, employees are sharing information about anyway, uh, but um, all these are in our uh, program, but they're sharing information that not necessarily we're just giving them, uh, but how engaged they are at work. There's, uh, Carl was talking about a hackathon that we were, um, that we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, Dan is congratulating John on his 30th anniversary. And um, we've got some charity uh, work going on uh, from employees there as well. So the, the information or the, uh, it's kind of contagious. Uh, this, uh, the social activity becomes uh, kind of as becoming an ingrained culture uh, for our company um, and that's why we want it to be a social business. Um, we've got, we give people information but they're doing it by themselves as well. There's, we see tweets from meetings, we see tweets from uh, actually our uh, leadership meeting in uh, Madison trended in Madison um, through our uh, hashtag I work for Amfam. Uh, so it's well, it is just really uh, quite amazing to see not only the information that we give to people, uh, that when they're doing it themselves, it just, it's heartwarming. Oh, I'm going to get teary in a minute. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. It, it, it was amazing to see, and we've, we've had three years in a row now of this leadership event that, that, that's happened in Madison, and it has trended locally here three, both all three times. Um, Peter Kim here, I'll just quickly touch on, on him. He's a... Uh, social media leader, he was actually one of the first ones to talk about this idea of social business. This is exactly kind of everything that we've been talking about today. Um, the idea of um, what's happening with your brand and marketing, what's happening with your employees, your leader, if you have sales folks, HR folks, everybody being involved, everybody has a role in social media, whether it's talking about the company or just being thought leaders and building that personal brand. This idea of a social business, and we feel like American Family is, um, is a social business because of the activities that, that we're doing um, from an employee advocacy standpoint, but also how it kind of works in conjunction with everything else we're doing as a brand from a marketing standpoint, um, working with our agents, working with um, our CEO. People don't just need to be in the program. You can, people can be connecting and um, part of it. Um, whether they're in the program or not. And it's great to see that uh, that, hap that is happening at AmFam. Uh, we believe that employee advocacy is strengthening how the people at our company uh, work with each other. And uh, it's social media is really helping um, cement that. So kind of quick review, and then we'll open it up for questions here, both uh, online and, and in person. Um, make sure you create good content to start with when it comes to uh, your social media content. 
Um, empower your people to share that um, measure and then adjust if you need to. Uh, and then, you know, kind of become a social business as we talked about. It all kind of works together from start to finish.